Hello and welcome to the news on NT International. I am Habiba Oladipo. We begin with a look at the headlines. Special focus on humanitarian crisis as Nigeria joins world community to mark humanitarian day. President Buhari holds retreat for ministers designate. Presidency clears air on restriction on food importation. Humanitarian crises resulting from insurgency, communal conflicts and other natural disasters have been posing global threat to human existence. The global efforts aimed at preferring solutions to the growing challenge are however stemming the tide of this menace. Correspondent Ilya Swaliyaku examines the yearly World Humanitarian Celebration that brings together experts to brainstorm on the way forward. Like the other parts of the world, has been faced with a series of humanitarian challenges that resulted in the death of many. The outbreak of insurgency and other forms of crisis subjected many to difficulties. A 10-year-old Mohammed Habib and his kid sister Zara are victims of displacement from insurgency in Bama, Borno State. These two, among other victims of insurgency, got out of Bama town without their parents. <laughs> The good news is that the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, took charge of them on arrival in IDP camps. These humanitarian efforts, complemented by other humanitarian bodies, has led credence to the yearly celebration of Humanitarian Day celebration. We need to collaborate, we need to come together, we need to partner with the various structures in place to be able to eradicate this humanitarian crisis. I am confident that the resource persons and panelists in this symposium will do justice to this theme. At the end, I expect that fresh ideas and perspectives will emerge in order to chart a new course in delivery of humanitarian services in this country and beyond. As part are of the views that Nigeria must face headlong the growing threats of humanitarian crisis for better society. In Abuja, Iliasu Aliakubu, NTA News. Meanwhile, Nigerians living with disabilities in the Federal Capital Territory are taking advantage of the 2019 World Humanitarian Day to demand social amenities like better accommodation, power supply and portable water to make life more meaningful. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday was at a colony in Karumajigi area of the Federal Capital Territory and reports that the colony houses 520 vulnerable people. Karumajigi disabled colony in the Federal Capital Territory is sited on about four acres of land with 520 people. The colony lacks basic amenities. The inhabitants, men, women and children, as well as the aged, are carrying on their daily activities. Most of the media, like NTA, they do visit the colony. Mohamed Dantani is the secretary to the colony's head. He said, apart from water and power supply, the colony lacks educational material. In the only primary school in the area, which was built and donated by a non-governmental organization. Because uh, without those uh, writing materials, I don't think they can be able to cope up. When they write, they forgot, they go back to the books and see what they write and remember. They continue the, the, the studies. However, some caregivers are working to address the educational needs of the pupils, especially in the provision of writing materials and desk. Record from the United Nations Office for Humanitarian Affairs shows that while women and girls are severely impacted by crisis, 
they are also leaders in recovery and resilience. Our recipient here today for scholarship are majorly female children. 80% female, 20% boys. Go to early age schools where children are finding it difficult to pay for school fees. Pick up a child, train a child on scholarship. The way I have been helped today, I would like to help others like that tomorrow. This year's celebration is focused on women who risk their lives to save others. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. And to talk more on the humanitarian issues in Nigeria and the world, I have with me in the studio Global Ambassador for Peace and Humanity, Asma Leo. Welcome to NTA International, Small. Uh, good evening. It's my pleasure to be here. Okay. So women seem to be more vulnerable in humanitarian crisis. What do you think is the way forward to reduce the risk involved? Well, uh, as we know, uh, disasters or any form of uh, humanitarian crisis usually affect the most vulnerable in society. So disasters just exacerbate the existing social norms that puts women under the influence of patriarchy. So I want to look at it from the aspect of the society where women play the role of subordinate. So when disaster strikes, it exacerbates it and magnifies the issues that are already underlying in the society. That is why wherever you go to any IDP camps or any communities where they are distressed or uh, have suffered one form of disaster or the other, the highest number of the victims or survivors you find are usually women and children. So for this year's uh, focus globally, it's to celebrate women uh, humanitarians. And for us as a nation, the, the theme for this year for Nigeria is uh, harnessing the role of women humanitarians from being vulnerable to building resilience. And I feel the topic is timely, or the theme for the year is timely, because this is how we'll get to find out what are the impacts of this conflict on women, what are the challenges, and what are the ways that we can employ to make sure that we bring life-saving uh, interventions to better the lives of the affected populations, especially women and girls. So I'm going to ask you, in your own opinion, how has the celebration impacted on humanitarian crisis around the world? Uh, globally, every year, uh, the United Nations has set aside August 19th to celebrate the achievement of humanitarian aid workers around the world. And uh, like I said earlier, this year's focus is on women, and therefore we call them the unsung heroes because women daily lay down their lives just to protect others. When disaster strikes, they are mostly the first responders. And you can see that all through the phases of these disasters and emergencies, women stay all through till the end of that uh, disaster when they are able to find durable solutions. And so these women also have their own personal challenges because first, they are mothers, they are wives, they are also co workers. And so therefore, there is the issue of trauma because most of times people feel because you're a humanitarian worker, you are so strong, you are just there to render life-saving support and assistance. Forgetting that even as a humanitarian, you also have to deal with your own personal issues which have to do with your psychosocial support system. And you need it also to survive in the area which or the people which you serve. And every year, the Humanitarian Day is celebrated in Nigeria and the world in general. How has this impacted humanitarian issues in Nigeria, for instance? Uh, it always brings the attention of not just the global community, but it also brings about uh, the enlightenment nationally and also at the local level. Because that is the day that people rally support for humanitarian assistance. The UN system rally support, the national government rally support, the local communities and also the affected populations rally support towards their assistance. So it is very key that every year when there is this celebration for humanitarian day, it opens up the issues that are underlining to see that what can we do as a government, what can we do as communities, what can we do as donors agencies or even the UN system to see that we step up the kind of intervention we give to the affected population. So I feel it is a very important day, especially today, it's a very important day globally and especially for Nigeria to link inwards. What have we been able to achieve as a nation with regards to helping the uh, affected populations, especially those in the Northeast? I know the government of Nigeria has done so much in the area of intervention, but I feel much more needs to be done. 
and it is not just a one way approach it has to be collaborative it has to come with partnership and also proper coordination to make sure that the resources that are on ground goes to the people that need it most that is our affected population Okay, and the theme for this year's celebration is celebrating women humanitarian. What do you make of this? How do you think this would impact on their work so far? I feel this, the topic for this year, the theme for this year is timely, is commendable. Because women, like I said, are always in the front line of uh, life-saving assistance to vulnerable populations. So for setting a day especially to celebrate their achievement, their su successes, their sacrifices, I think it is timely and commendable. And therefore, Nigerian women who are humanitarians and Nigerian women who have suffered one kind of... Uh, uh, all kinds of uh, abuses or uh, those who are in uh, a humanitarian crisis or areas that have been affected by one form of humanitarian crisis or the other. Today, we celebrate there, not just for humanitarian workers, but also the recipients, the beneficiaries, who are also building resilience to cope or to build up better. So today is a special day, and I'm excited as a humanitarian to see that the whole world is celebrating women humanitarians and also rallying support for women humanitarians and women who have been affected by crisis all over the world, and especially in Nigeria. Many thanks. That is Asma Leo, Global Ambassador for Peace and Humanity. Thanks for your time. It's my pleasure. You're and welcome. back to the news, President Muhammad Buhari has described as frightening the looming demographic, demographic potential of the country between now and 2050, saying handouts from so-called development partners can no longer help as solutions to the nation's problem lies within. He is, however, optimistic that with effective implementation of the next level agenda, his administration's eight years will have laid the grounds for lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty, fundamentally shifting the country's trajectory and placing the nations amongst the world's greatest. The president was speaking at the opening of a two-day presidential retreat for ministers designates preparatory to the inauguration of the Federal Executive Council. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. It is designed to prepare and sensitize the ministers designate on the status of policies, programs and projects of government and the roadmap towards the delivery of its priorities as encapsulated in the next level agenda. President Muhammad Buhari, who congratulated the ministers designate whom he said were chosen by the country above others, hopes that they will be in tune with their roles and responsibilities in the changing times as the nation's course is charted for a sustainable future. By average estimates, our population is close to 200 million people today. By 2050, the United Nations estimates put Nigeria aside globally behind only India and China with a projected population of 411 million people. This is a frightening prospect, honorable ministers designate. It is a great privilege for you to be called upon to serve in this great office of state, and you must grasp the chance with two hands and put in your best efforts, as Nigeria today needs top managers to handle our numerous challenges. There will be long hours, and you must be prepared to live laborious days if we are to serve our people optimally. The president said they will also be expected to ensure that the agencies under their ministries are effective, efficient, and accountable in the discharge of their responsibilities as the government sustains efforts at securing the country, improving the economy, and fighting corruption. We have rolled back the frontiers of terrorism. We are actively addressing other challenges, such as kidnapping, farmer harder violence, improving the safety of our roads, railways, air traffic, and fire control capabilities. We are steadily turning the economy around through investment in agriculture, manufacturing, shoring up our foreign reserves, curbing inflation, improving the country's infrastructure. We have recovered hundreds of billions of stolen assets and are actively pursuing control measures to tackle leakages in public resources. We will not let up in fighting corruption. 
although the ministers designate were chosen to represent their states as a constitutional imperative, President Buhari, however, insists that it is vital for all of them to work as a team and, most importantly, as Nigerians. Convener of the retreat and secretary to the government of the Federation, Boz Mustafa, told the appointees that as the president's aides, their legacies will lie in how much support they have been able to give in the task of moving Nigeria to the next level and not how much patronage extended to close associates and supporters. This call to service requires all of us to fully share in the president's vision and agenda for our country. As members of the president's team, it behoves on us to join him in providing the leadership required to develop Nigeria and lift the bulk of its people out of poverty. You will be required to walk to the high standards of integrity, discipline, and dedication that have been set by the president in his long career in the service of the country. The SGF encouraged them to participate actively in sessions of the retreat, which he said will shape the way they will work over the next four years. From the State House, Adam Usambu, NTA News. You are watching the news on NTA International, reaching you live from Abuja. It's time to take a break. We'll be back shortly with more reports. Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. You're welcome back to the news. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has declined an expert motion seeking to stop President Muhammad Buhari from swearing in the 43 ministerial nominees recently confirmed by the Nigerian Senate. Justice Taiwo Taiwo, who delivered the ruling, said the applicants filed their motion out of time. Olabo Diarewa tells us more. Right in section 14, subsection 3, and section 147 of the 1999 constitution as amended. An indigenous of Kawi community in the federal capital territory, Musa Baba Panya, approached the court for an order to stop President Muhammad Buhari from inaugurating his 43 ministers designate. The applicant is seeking compliance with the March 15, 2018 judgment of the Court of Appeal, Abuja, which directed that an Abuja indigenous should also be appointed as a minister for the Federation. Justice Taiwo Taiwo reasoned that while the applicants had the fundamental right to file the motion, the court would not stop the minister's inauguration since they have already been screened by the Senate. Instead, Justice Taiwo directed Musa Baba Panya to personally set the court processes on President Muhammad Buhari and the Attorney General of the Federation. My Lord is the, of the opinion that uh, it is better to put them on notice than to uh, stop the inauguration and then have an expedited hearing of the matter. No date was fixed for continuation of the suits in Abuja Labodarewa. NTA News. The All Progressives Congress has strongly condemned the attack on Senator E.K. Ikwerimadu, the immediate past Deputy Senate President and sen seven Senator by members of the outlawed indigenous people of Biafra on Saturday in Nuremberg, Germany. In the, part, the party, in a statement by its National Publicity Secretary, Larry Issa Onilu, described those involved in the despicable action and the organization they represent as un unworthy in character. The statement adds that the assault on Senator Ike Madu was an indecent action and it is below the acceptable standard of behavior expected of citizens, whether in Nigeria or abroad. 
Nigerians APC have said have a responsibility to collectively rise against evil at all times in whatever guise it appears. The presidency has described as unfounded the report making the rounds that the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Babatunde Fowler, is under investigation. The letter from the chief of staff to the president, Abai Kerry, on which the purported rumor of an investigation was based, merely raises concern over the negative run of the tax revenue collections in recent time. In a statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Gerber Shehu merely expresses concern that the projected revenue of government falls behind real current expenditure, even without having factored in capital expenditure. Consequently, it appeared that the country might be heading for a fiscal crisis if urgent steps are not taken to halt the negative trends in targeting setting and targeting realization in ta tax revenue. Anyone conversant with the Federal Executive Council deliberation would have observed that the issues bordering on revenue form the number one concern of what Nigerians face today and therefore often take a prime place in discussion of the body. It is noteworthy and highly commendable that under this administration, the number one of taxable Nigerians has increased from 10 million to 20 million with concerted efforts still ongoing to bring a lot more into the tax net. And it's over now to Olayin Kaujo for financial sector. Welcome to this segment of the news. Financial Times article entitled Mahmoud Buhari's Park Dismay Over Policy Shifts on Food Imports, published 15th August, which suggests that the Nigerian government is restricting the import of agricultural products into the country is misunderstood. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Gabriel Sheou, in a letter to the publisher of Financial Times, stated that, to be absolutely clear, there is no ban or restriction on the importation of food items whatsoever. The statement added that President Buhari has consistently worked towards strengthening Nigeria's own industrial and agricultural base. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has announced 15 companies winners of its 2019-2020 direct sales of crude oil and direct purchase of petroleum products arrangement. A release in Abuja by the Corporation's Group General Manager, Group Public Affairs Division, Undu Ungamadu, said it is in line with NNPC's resolve to transparency and accountability of its activities as committed to by its group managing director, Mele Kiari. Following the completion of the 2019-2020 DSDP tender exercise, reputable and experienced international companies and Nigerian downstream companies emerged successful to undertake the 2019-2020 DSDP arrangement. The contract is for one year, effective 1st October 2019 to 30th September 2020. Let's now see how the equities market fed this Monday. And that's it on this segment of the news. I am Olayinka Ojo. Many thanks, Olayinka. And in another development, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emiefele, has described as very unfair as well as unfortunate the attempts by some Nigerians to misrepresent President Muhammad Buhari's comment on the non utilization of foreign exchange for the importation of food into the country. Speaking to newsmen on sidelines of the retreat for ministers designate, Mr. Emiefele said the president's directive is in the logic of the APEX Bank for Foreign Exchange Policy Management. This year explains started in 2016 with the ban on the importation of 41 food and not food items into the country. What we will say from the Central Bank of Nigeria is that this president has made this comment purely to, to strengthen the position of the Central Bank of Nigeria. To say yes, he believes in what the Central Bank of Nigeria has been doing since 2016 and that there is a need for us to reinforce that on, uh, going forward. And I, I would say that, to be honest, we would aggressively go more into the list of items that have been imported into the country and that we think can be produced in Nigeria. And we would, we would, and, and I would like to, to stress that we would ensure that more of these items get onto the list of items that are going to be restricted from accessing foreign exchange in the Nigerian banking industry, not just from central bank source. Why should we be exporting jobs to another country? 
Today we are complaining that there is a high rate of unemployment, leading to, to some extent, the level of insecurity in the country. Why should we allow people to import food, food that can be produced in the country? We need to improve the wealth in our rural communities, and, and I'm saying we will not change course. We will even be more aggressive on this, on this, on this program. And for trending stories from other parts of the globe, here is Joyce Ometu. Sudan's former president, Omar al-Bashir, appeared in court Monday to face corruption charges, which his lawyers say are baseless. Mr. Bashir was ousted in April after months of protests, which brought an end to his nearly 30 years in power. The former president is alleged to possess foreign currency and receiving gifts illegally. On Sunday, pro-democracy activists and the country's military leaders signed a deal paving the way for elections. And from Afghanistan comes a report that a series of bomb blasts has rocked the eastern Afghan city of Jalalabad Monday morning as residents were marking the country's 100th Independence Day celebrations. Reports say at least 30 people were wounded in the attack. President Ashraf Ghani, in an Independence Day address in Kabul, called on the international community to stand with Afghanistan to eradicate the fighters' nests. And from Ankara, capital of Turkey, comes a report that three elected mayors have been removed from office and more than 400 people detained as part of a crackdown over alleged links to Kurdish militants. The mayors were elected in March and accused of spreading terrorism propaganda and financing terrorism. There are fears that the move could escalate tension in the main Kurdish southeast region of the country. Joyce Ometu. NTA News. And that's the news at this time. Many thanks for watching. I am Habiba Oladipo.